on the next episode of Sip Suds and Smokes. While visiting my family in Pennsylvania recently, Dave and I picked up a random selection of some hard ciders to bring back and share with the good old boys. The ciders we will be tasting today are Grand Cru English Cider from Aspal Cider and Vinegar in Suffolk, England, Darlin Creek Batch 2020 from Eve's Cidery in Van Eaton, New York, DuPont Reserve from Domaine DuPont in Vico, Ponfo, France, Cider Miloslavki from Brower Fortuna in Miloslav, Poland, and last, Wild Berry Cider from BRLO Brewing in Berlin, Berlin, <laughs> Germany. We'll be right back after this break. Almost live from the dude in the basement studios. Why? Because that's where the good stuff is. It sips, suds, and smokes with your smoke and host, the good old boys. Suds, suds, it's time for more suds. Welcome, everyone. Here we are, gathered around for another sud segment where we don't just drink beer and talk about it. We drink mead, cider, hard, hard, (laughs) salt, sir, hard, (laughs) and anything else we think you might like or that might make good old boy Dave throw up and talk about it. Wow. If Mike keeps saying hard like that, I am going to throw up. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying they're more uh, gas station products? Is that what you're saying? Here? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I'm one of your hosts, good old gal Juliana, and joining me at this special table today is good old boy Mike. Hard. Welcome, everybody. This is good old boy Mike. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> More about that special word later. <laughs> Reverend Mark, hello. Hello, as I scoot down the table just a little bit <laughs> from Mr. Hard. <laughs> Give him a wide berth. <laughs> Look, you, do, you don't know today's story. We might move it up in the, in, in the conversation. We may need to just start with that. It now, don't maybe. move it up, whatever you do. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. (laughs) Way too funny already. Uh, Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Good old boy Dave, the one that started this mess. I feel so uncomfortable (laughs) right now. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Today's episode is not about beer, folks. It's about... Hard. Cider. (laughs) But it's about beer, folks, and cider. Sure. (laughs) And it is about hard cider, actually. So, thank you. Sure. Thank you. While visiting my family in Pennsylvania recently, Dave and I picked up a random selection of some hard ciders to bring back and share with the good old boys. Reverend Mark, if you don't mind, please give us today's lineup. Be happy to. The ciders we will be tasting today are. Grand Cru English Cider from Aspal Cider and Vinegar in Suffolk, England. It's Aspal. Wow. Aspal. Did I say? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Aspal. Yes. Like you said. <laughs> Next, Darlin Creek Batch 2020 from Eve's Cidery in Van Eaton, New York. DuPont Reserve from Domaine DuPont in Vico, Pompo, France. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Yes. Cider Miloslav, Miloslavki from Brow, Brower Fortuna in Miloslav, Poland. And last, Wild Berry Cider from BL, 
B-R-L-O, brewing in Berlin, Berlin, <laughs> Germany. <laughs> Y'all ever been I'm, to I Berlin, can't go, Germany? I can't go from, Fran- from France to German very easily. Yeah. <laughs> With a little bit of Poland in between. Yeah. I'm seeing what's happening now that you're living in a different part of the state. You know, there's this slow degradation that's really taking yeah, place. Yeah, you, you, you got to dial your mind. Are you in the right again? <laughs> it's, is East Tennessee, you moved to the wrong part of the state. Is East Tennessee starting to show? I got show? some drugs for you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, thank you. That was great. I take another run and start at this if you like. No, <laughs> it doesn't get better the second time around. <laughs> okay, good old boy, Mike. Please give us the suds ratings for today. We'll be discussing and rating these ciders with these suds ratings plus our signature belching sounds. Here are those ratings now. Number one, that sucks. Give me anything but an angry orchard. Two. Was that a woodchuck tasted more like a chuck? Up chuck. Up chuck. (laughs) Thank you for the correction. Number three. (laughs) Ah, what a relief. We only do one cider show a year. (laughs) Entirely true. And number five. A body should really not make that sound. Wait. You skipped four. Oh, I skipped four? That's number four. Yeah, (laughs) number four. A body should really not make that sound. (laughs) (laughs) Is this your first time? <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, there's no numbers on here. I can only count to four. Uh, number five. Listen to that hang time. Give me another Granny Smith. Flawless. Do you want me to go back and re-record that? <laughs> I don't think it's going to get better. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Well, let's get to the ciders. The first one that we are going to talk about is the Grand Cru English Cider from Aspel Cider and Vinegar in Suffolk County, Suffolk, England. 6.8% ABV. Now, way back in 1728, Clement Chevalier planted his first large-scale cider orchards in Suffolk. Clement nurtured the trees, then pressed and blended his apples, pioneering a new standard for British fine cider with a C-Y-D-E-R. Almost 300 years C-Y-D-E-R. on. C-Y-D-E-R. C-Y-D-E-R. Uh, <laughs> wee wee. Almost 300 years on, they're still producing unparalleled cider at the original Cider House. That's somebody that just couldn't move on to the next thing. Um, <laughs> wow. I'm trying to think if I've had uh, some other uh, English cider. I want to say there was a Sam Smith. Mm -hmm. That uh, organic cider. uh, And they do a Perry, too. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Yep. It's pretty dry. We're sipping these in real time uh, today, folks. So uh, if you hear us slurping and smacking our lips, um, we didn't taste these in advance. (laughs) Well, you know, I think the first thing that strikes me is that um, this is um, very grape-like. Um, if I had to pick a fruit, not apple, uh, this didn't really tart. The sugars are really low mm-hmm. uh, in this. Um, I like the finish off this. Uh, I think the thing uh, that I like, it's a, t- a tad earthy, mm-hmm. um, but it's really short um, on the back end. Right. It's a little dry it's- finish. Following on the earthy part, it's uh, minerally a little bit, just slightly, and yeah. kind of a semi. That's a bit. I would say it's kind of semi dry or semi sweet, wherever mm-hmm. that line can be drawn. Um, and it almost tastes like a sh- like a Chardonnay yeast to me. What little I know. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I have fermented a few ciders in my day. Yeah. No, I mm-hmm. get it because it's it's a little whiny. Like for it being a cider, yeah, mm-hmm. I get a whininess mm-hmm. to it, um, and I also like feel like I'm getting like some tannins or something. What's well, kind of mm. kind of dries your mouth a little bit. I, mean, and, yeah. I could be confused with that earthy thing, okay. you know, the minerality okay, gotcha. thing. I think those sure uh, okay. those can get really confusing pretty yeah. quick with a okay. fruit, and you know, uh, any day. Now I know we don't do a lot of cider shows during the seasons most of the, most seasons, but do you guys drink cider? often or um i'm very picky usually when i choose it's usually for thanksgiving is a very common thing Mm -hmm. that i'll have um either at a you know a gathering you know that week um 
sometimes I have, you know, served it at Thanksgiving itself. Um, the DuPont Reserve that we uh, we uh, that we're tasting today, I remember taking that to a it's like a wine and cheese, mm-hmm. um, yeah, you yeah. know, party that I went to, and I brought that just to screw with people, you know. Um, because they all thought, oh, Mike's a wine guy. He's going to bring, bring you know, some killer wine. Yeah. And I brought that instead just to yeah. really freak people out. And they were like, man, this is really good wine. And I go, yeah, it's a cider. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I think a lot of, I think cider is a good like bridge drink because, you know, for people who are like gluten sensitive or they just don't like beer, you know. Yeah, Which, absolutely. People that don't like hops, this is, uh, you should stick mm-hmm, this on your radar. Mm-hmm. Um, and more importantly is that you need to get beyond a lot of the macro ciders that are out there. Uh, go back and listen to the other eight cider shows that we've done. And yeah. <clears throat> the ones that we've done, especially that were blind, um, really you know, kind of hammer the point home about the stark contrast between a lot of the craft uh, cider um, makers and a lot of the macro uh, cider products that you may be more familiar with. Yeah. Um, well, and if you're if you're only really drinking like a lot of sugar, woodchuck those. or whatever, you're that that's exactly it. That's it's like almost everything else you see on the store shelves, like the hard teas and everything. It's just loaded with sweetener, you know, just to kind of make it more palatable. It's very one note, you know, mm. but. Yeah, and given we mentioned Thanksgiving, given that that's around the corner, I think this would pair well with like, especially turkeys often overly dry. Yeah, and I think this this would be a nice accompaniment. Don't dry out your turkey. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we are going to rate the Grand Cru English cider from Aspel Cider and Vinegar in Suffolk, England, a three. Good start. Yeah. Now, moving on, mm. let's go mm. to the Darling Creek Batch 2020 from Eve Cidery in Van Etten or Van Eaton, New York, which is uh, kind of where the Finger Lakes and the Adirondacks kind of like come together. Is it the Middle Finger Lakes? <clears throat> Maybe. It's where the Canadians go. Are we there yet? Mm. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Hey. Well, Eve Cidery is a small family farm producing naturally fermented ciders from their organically grown fruit and from wild foraged apples and pears in the hills of Van Etten, which is located at the intersection of the Finger Lakes and the Northern <clears throat> Appalachian Plateau. Hey, I wasn't far off. Uh, traditional lands of the Cayuga Nation and a... Haudenosaunee, and forgive me if I'm saying that right, the Confederacy in upstate New York. Sounds better with cider. Okay. Good. Yeah, there you go. Good. Wow. Um, you know, the first thing that came to my mind was that Ooh. sweet tart thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, so. we'll be back with more discussion in just a minute. Welcome back, everyone. Today's episode, we are discussing... Oh, my darling. Oh, my darling. Oh, my darling, Creek Satter. Because <laughs> it don't taste like Clementine. No. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Folks, today is a cider episode. It's no matinee. <laughs> yeah. That too. And right before the break, we started a discussion about the Darling Creek Batch 2020 from Eve Cidery in Van Etten or Van Eaton, New York. And there is a lot going on here. There is. So I, I actually said, you know, the first thing that kind of hit me was that, you know, sweet tart uh, element where it's kind of that powdery, you know, drying, uh, you know, tart component to it. Um, but there's a lot, you know, definitely here. It's like it's almost blended with four or five vinegars um, that are happening all at the same time. It's a bit of like apple cider, a bit of balsamic, you know, something mm-hmm. that's even maybe a bit more aged, you know, balsamic, you know, kind of going on that brings a lot more sugars forward. Yeah, I like kind of like the complexity of this. It's like a, I don't know, eight layer cake. This is you know, advanced. This cider. is not your grocery store cider for Negative. sure. Negative. Right. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely acid here, and um, in reading about this 
particular vintage. Uh, it was during a drought year, which, you know, the the apples had to struggle, you know, and that that translates into, you might say, the terroir of how this winds up tasting as well. So it's very, kind of has an earthy aspect to it. Gotcha. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's gorgeous in such a transition from the first one that we tried to this like oh these I are mean, stark contrast i hate to say them. apples and oranges but <laughs> you know like it's so completely different um but i'm really enjoying it mm-hmm. yeah yeah i am picking up some other fruit you know in this as well like tangelos i think was you know kind of what or even like a yeah even like a clementine yeah, yeah. like yeah. it's it's yeah it got a little almost citrus zip to a little zip to it yeah. yeah but brightness yeah but so nice um now what would you pair this with mike hmm. i think the first thing that comes to my mind would be a good wedge of stilton mm. Mm. yeah um or a very uh camembert uh you know a very creamy thick you know french uh cheese mm-hmm. um I can definitely think of uh, even th- some things from uh, Cypress Grove. Uh, this would go well with, uh, uh, what is it, Midnight uh, Midnight something. I'll think of it in a minute. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, something that definitely is very heavy on the palate, um, something that is not going to fight with the sugars, the acid. Um, yeah, the, I think something that would be rather fatty. Uh, mm-hmm. We go, you know, pretty well with this braised lamb. Oh, oh sure, yeah, mm-hmm. all day long. And that cypress grove was midnight moon. Midnight moon. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I just walk up to the counter and say midnight. Oh yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> but of well, course. he's that guy. Right. That guy. Oh, yeah, it's the midnight moon guy. Yeah. yeah. I could see this also with with uh, a really interesting salad with with the. Uh, with dried fruits and nuts and maybe a little bit of blue cheese or gorgonzola. Uh, um, yeah. 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 This would, cause this would play well with like roasted a, hazelnuts. Like you said, mm-hmm. with the, the, you know, like the, the vinegar notes that come out. So this would play well with like a, a vinaigrette dressing too. Very yeah. nice. Very nice. What would you, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, also of note there website is gorgeous because it's not just about hey we make cider here's our selection of ciders Have well a i nice think a day. gorgeous website absolutely influences what i think about yeah it. yeah yeah <laughs> no but what i hey do- when you have to look stuff up about these people it actually is nice when it's up to date and you can Currently. copy and paste easily <laughs> exactly yeah. yeah exactly no but what i do like is is that for them it's not just about I'm making, I have a bunch of apples. I'm going to make a cider mm. and I'm going to put it out in a bottle. No, they're, like, they're talking about the geology and the terroir of the land and how it's affecting mm. everything. So like they're putting a little bit more effort. I'm very appreciative of that. Nice. Anyways, we are going to rate the Darling Creek batch 2020 from Eve Cidery A4. Nice. Uh, uh, uh. Well, and now, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, here it is. We can't oh, make no. him wait any longer. What we've been waiting for. <laughs> hey, if you thought <laughs> if you thought that we were not uh, entertaining yet, wait until you get a load of this ED drug story from a uh, villages man in Florida. He was seventy seven years old. He faces hard time, hard, hard. time for his stockpile of illegal ED drugs in the retirement uh, community. Reggie Kinser, boy, I want to meet this guy, who lives in the villages in Florida, starred in the documentary Some Kind of Heaven. Um, so he uh, stared, uh, He starred in the award-winning documentary about the sprawling villages retirement community, is accused of trying to hawk $1,800 worth of black market erectile dysfunction uh, drugs. Now, the first thing that came to mind, I was like, so exactly what's your marketing strategy are you just like hanging out in the golf cart going get you ed drugs ed drugs he's looking around for all the disappointed wives i mean do you change and alter the concept of the of a uh of the cart girl into the ed drug girl i mean do you are you selling bud light and ed drugs in a package system you know i mean exactly how what is your marketing plan 
Uh, let's see. Uh, his wife was in the same documentary as well. Um, the Villages has given Reggie an opportunity to grow in different ways. Hard. His wife <laughs> wow. can be heard saying in a trailer as Kinsler is shown performing martial arts exercises next to a, his golf cart. Kung, Kung Fu ball. Master. Ball. Wow. <laughs> Band once again. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. then the voiceover shifts to, uh, shifts to Kenser, a devotee of Kung Fu who is shown shirtless and grunting next to a pool. Grunting. I didn't do grunting. I'm sorry. Yeah, please don't. Please don't uh, reenact that. You know, I haven't met this guy, so I'm just going to pick a dialect for him. My whole training is about ending my life with a smile on my face. He says before the video pants to a shot of him shaking an unidentified substance in the palm of his hand, then snorting it up his nose. Wow. Ooh, doggy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the good stuff. Everybody knows we're on the verge of death. People are still just ignoring it, and so... I just like stimulating myself with drugs. <laughs> they give me a spiritual place really quick, he says in the Southern draw. See, I you were right, right, right there. You were was there, Mike. Before my... even that part of it. It's the... like you and this guy are the same person. We uh, we have a kindred spirit. I guarantee you that he was in county lockup almost about the same time that I probably was. The village is nicknamed God's Waiting Room. It's about 45 northwest of Orlando. Is known as a palm tree line utopia for those over 55. Now, the stunning fact that you have not, they have omitted from this is this is ground zero for the the highest measure of STDs in the state, in the state of, Florida, of Florida, which this says a is lot. Chlamydia ground zero, folks. If you want to know where, where it started, right there. For the everyone who thought it was Disney World, they're probably pretty surprised. That oh, it is the Disney World for uh, f apparently for uh, people um, that are sexually active over the. Well, age. apparently there's a lot of rides. Yep. So. Well, Kenser is no stranger to a pair of ha handcuffs, at least. Since he hit his 70s, he was arrested in a parking lot in the village's Laurel Manor Recreation Center. In September of 2018, after Sumner County deputies responded to a report of a suspicious person. What's a suspicious person look like in the villages? You know what? I'll give you five bingo cards for $4. <laughs> you know, Probably a, like <laughs> some dude standing out in the parking lot pitching a tent. So he got arrested because he smeared a marijuana and asked him if he had any on him. Well, not like on me, on me, but I mean, if you need some, I, I got some. I, I know a guy. Give me like eight minutes. I'll be right back. I got to take my drugs, too. So, you know, my sciatica is uh, acting up a bit. Uh, so. <laughs> I just take it from a cataract. Yep. There you go. So guess where this guy's from? Don't want to know. Boom. <laughs> He's a Tennessee native. <laughs> what? Later claimed in court papers that he had immunity from his marijuana charges due to his membership in the Akaluva National Native American Church. Oh. I'm a sovereign. <laughs> wow. I'm going to say that a little more just for our friend Barger. Sovereign. That's why I get to smoke my weed. Less than two months later, he was arrested again for skipping out on his court date. Well, you know, I was busy. Uh, in February 2020, he was collared for multiple drug offenses stemming from a 2018 Homeland Security raid on his Tamarind Grove home. Good Lord. The guy has had the Homeland Security <laughs> invading his house. Gotta love this. Let's see. Uh, uh, he was um, in possession of ecstasy, psychedelic mushrooms, and marijuana in a bag labeled Wellness Center of the Rockies. <laughs> <laughs> now, I just want to wow. know, what kind of packaging did yep. they use? Was it like a velvet bag? Did they use a cardboard bag? I mean, you know. Oh, it was probably one of those made out of recyclable. Uh, recycled, absolutely. It's all know, about the things. environment. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, as long as they go green. Earth first. I think your mushrooms are, are going to be That's the right. best on the planet. <laughs> I mean, the story just keeps on getting better. So, uh he was uh, he pled guilty in both prior cases and was sentenced to three years in probation, community service, and drug treatment program. 
the latest federal charges <laughs> and kids are obtained. I don't think it's just later. I think it's the ongoing, you know, federal charges obtained the illicit erectile drugs, uh, dis- dysfunctional meds in October of 2018. It wasn't clear why it took nearly five years for the feds to charge him or whether the case is connected to the Homeland Security raid of the same year. Now, I want to be in that meeting with, you know, they're sitting around going, so, uh, any y'all talk to cancer lately? We need to, uh, I think he's moving something. It's maybe, maybe mushrooms or something a bit he's harder. He's got something big. I'm he's telling you, he always plan. got something going over there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, Earl, I want you to drive by that recreation center again. They got the good lemonade in there. Go over and try that. But see if he's out in the parking lot as well. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. <laughs> you know, so oh, I'm telling you, the numbers work in his favor. He only gets a maximum of one year in prison and a ten thousand dollar fine. And Kinsler did if not you're, immediately return a request for comments. If so. you're 77, a one year sentence could be a life sentence. Yeah, you know, it's like you're going to miss all the really good Wheel of Fortune episodes. I'm telling you, you're, no more Matlock for you, buddy. There is, you're going to miss <laughs> all of the good, you know, uh, daytime game shows. I'm telling you, you're never going to see one more episode of Jeopardy. The, you know, so. No more blue plate uh, specials. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to see this guy on career day, you know? <laughs> so it would be like, look, kids, you got to learn how to pivot. If the feds come and take away your drugs, the thing is, is they take those drugs away, but you still in the drug business. So pivot and go for the ED drug. So here's my thing, though. It's like if this was 20 years ago or 10 years ago, I, I could see a black market ED drug ring in a retirement home but like they're easy to get now like you don't even have to have a prescription like you know why not just go to you know one of the websites or whatever and or to help, just go oh, to your doctor. I'm sorry, but if you can type the word Camagra oral jelly <laughs> into your search engine and not think that's going to be consequential, go ahead, Dave. <laughs> you know, let me know what I was what pop up ads you'll be seeing I for was the next 20 years. Strictly doing research, okay? For the show. It was for the <laughs> <Exactly>. show. <laughs> Good luck on purging those cookies. <laughs> Well, all I have to say is I hope that they're pairing some really awesome cider that we're having today with uh, their ED drugs and uh, doing well in the villages. So, uh, Reggie, good luck, good luck, well, Reggie. I'm going to come by and visit you, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's going to smuggle some stuff in for you. Oh, uh, yeah. This is the good cider. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Wow. Okay. Speaking of some good cider. Hard. <laughs> We need to get back to our core topic. <laughs> yeah. Cider. Um, let's go to the DuPont Reserve. From, ah, ah. DuPont. From Domaine DuPont, DuPont. in Vito Ponfo, yeah. France. Sounds good. 6.9% Sounds ADV. like something's caught in your left nostril. <laughs> oh, jeez. So the family DuPont family, the Famille DuPont family estate consists of 74 acres of orchards in Normandy. Um, and they've been doing this for a very long time. They also produced Pomo, am I saying that right? As well as Calvados. And uh, those are varieties of apples. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. I gorgeous. They, right? they make apple brandy, right? So that's their other deal. I love it. Mm. I it wouldn't I know. be it wouldn't be cognac. <laughs> I mean, it's got to be from the cognac area yeah. of France, right? Uh, and this is a bit sweeter, if you will, than mm-hmm. some of the other offerings that we've tried. I think the first uh, adjective I'm thinking of is elegant. Um, it just has this moment in your palate where it's like, ah, bonjour, come on, come on, fils. Let's have some wine. Let's have some saddle, some cheese. Oh, yes. And some bad. <laughs> Don't mind my body odor. Mm. <laughs> Croissant, uh, the, uh, the stilton, with the, mm, magnifique. Uh, you know, it's just, it has this element of elegance about it where it really has a wonderful start. Uh, the sugar is very forward in this. I love the mid palate. There's a lot of complexity going on. And it really just has this really wonderful kind mm. of lingering finish coming off the back of it that I like. 
I do not want to put anything else on my palate. I want to enjoy this for another five minutes before I absolutely consume anything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's very velvety as well. Yeah. Mm, What's a good word? Yeah. Mm. C'est élégant ferret. Did you say an elegant Mm. ferret? Yes, that's exactly right, Dave. Would you like some more ED drugs? (laughs) (laughs) At seat number one. Elegant ferret. (laughs) You know. Everything sounds better in French. Ah, uh, so. Wes, it does, Monsieur. Um, wow. I think the only thing that uh, I don't like about this is that I'm going to finish it, and I need more. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> I I really love it. This this is exquisite. This is definitely uh, what I would call. Uh, if you want to open something up at a really good family gathering, I think this is a great w- at wedding gift. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I think this is uh, really awesome at, uh, you know, a, uh, a baby shower, um, <laughs> you know. Benjamin just, baby just, shower just, well, just, <laughs> yeah. well, you know, you're always looking for something as an alternative, you know, to serve at, you know, at gatherings of people. And it's like, oh, I, I can't drink wine. Well, I can't drink beer. And, you know, and I think this is the thing that you put in the mix to really – you know, um, push it over the top yeah. and say, uh, I got you, you game, know, game changer. Yeah. Absolutely. And they'll have a half glass of this and going, well, we're going to stop and get a half a case of this on the way home. Oh, Is this yeah, something you would, right. you could sell her or do you need to probably drink it when it's like, it's as good as it's going to get. Well, I have had some, mm. uh, ciders that have been cellared and I wouldn't say that they improve. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, with, uh, cellaring, um, now this is actually cellared beforehand. Cause this was finished in, in barrels, a yeah. barrel, uh, before it was bottled. But, um, I would say, you know, if you're not consuming this probably in the first year or two, I think, you know, I don't think it's going to get it, any better. Yeah. 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 I think the vinegar is fair. going to oh. settle in and okay. yeah, that probably makes sense. provide some off taste. Yeah. 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 But and I, it's I a little lower this. ABV. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we are going to rate the DuPont Reserve from Domaine DuPont, France, a five. And I don't know all the price points on these, but I'm betting that was probably the most expensive one at the table. Probably one of the two most, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Don't let that uh, influence your choice. Oh, no. No. We'll be back with more in just a minute. Welcome back, everyone. Today's episode is all about... That fella from the villages. Boy, <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, <laughs> I was going to say it's all about cider. At its core, this episode is definitely about apples. <laughs> and you need drugs. Oh, well, yes. Gosh. Okay, so... We've had an American cider. We've had an English cider. We've had a French cider. And now we're going to go to Poland. And and we're going to talk about the cider Miloslawski from Brauer Fortuna in Miloslaw, Poland. Actually, it's pronounced Miliwake. There you go. (laughs) My apologies. <laughs> this is 4.5% ABV. It's a combination of several carefully selected varieties of apples cultivated in Poland. Bad, good, bad, good. <laughs> Just don't use the worm, ones with the worm in it. <laughs> so the Fortuna Brewery in Miloslaw has cherished the tradition Actually, of brewing beer Milwaukee. and other specialties <laughs> since 1889. So they make that combs... They do. The porter that we really like. Mm-hmm. They do. Um, they they have a wide variety of pilsners and ales. Yeah. They make an IPA even. You may else getting like diacetyl. A little. This. Something mm-hmm. things off. I mm-hmm. like I got a bunch of it like right at the very first sip, but it, it seems to have kind of backed off a little bit. I think bit. Reggie'd like this with a little and, ecstasy. Ooh. And is that inappropriate? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> because it will put me in a spiritual place. That's right. 
I like a little butter with my cider. There is definitely something off, uh, you know, at the right at the top of the mid palate, you know, mm -hmm. um, that kind of comes in and says, oh, hey, you're not supposed to be here. Yeah. What are you getting out of this thing, Mike? I don't or think Martin? it's diacetyl, but um, it's something that's definitely buttery. That's for sure. Yum. <laughs> <laughs> This is literally. Never mark, tell us how you really <laughs> feel. Um, I think if you were to drop a stick of butter and add some uh, vinegar on top of it and hit blend, this is it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the best way I can describe this taste profile. Like you're going to combine those things, you know, of your own free will. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Reminds me yeah. of Barbara Streisand. Yeah. It's like some ED drugs on the back. Like end. butter. <laughs> <laughs> Wash it down really well. Like butter. Hmm. You oh, could put pour this in your little whirly pop on top of the stove with 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 some of that. Uh, boy, I'd be afraid how that would go. <laughs> but once you get past that, butter. Yeah, that initial taste. Then the apples are pleasant underneath. Maybe it's supposed to be like apple pie. You know, like no, like you know, buttery apples. Like cheddar apple pie. Well, hmm. except butter. <laughs> I think it's that vinegar thing that's really taking all of this, you know, in okay. a place that, you know, this really shouldn't go or shouldn't be there. And I don't know. It's kind of off-putting. I, I wouldn't, I don't particularly like this. And the fact that this is also naturally fermented, that could have some, some, yeah. Yeah. Some, some microflora yeah, that's in sure. here that shouldn't be. Well, it's from Vaudoir. Mm. He come over there and spit in that bucket. <laughs> all natural i just like um you know i guess this is the first one in the flight where uh cider is not their core <laughs> i get it core business yeah. uh yeah another core joke maybe That's they right. should pivot to selling ed drugs in poland you know <laughs> you slipped a little bit of that uh oral gel into this there you go oh. you, know, you know what i'm saying Talk about butter then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> She's going to be asking for more. Love butter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and drinking this somewhat cool or cold, it's passable, but I can't imagine it, it, that it would get, that it as would it get warms better up. as, yeah. it, as it warms worse. up. Wow. It yeah. just gets butter. Sorry. I mean, yeah. not better. Oh, that's sad. I, 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 I would I'm go not this, fan. but whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, the... Miloslavski, the... Wait, how do you say it? Actually, it's pronounced Miliwake. Yeah, there you go. It's great. got a great body, but her face. <laughs> nice. Well, <laughs> wow. Maybe. Welcome, was, you know, welcome, everybody. This is the matinee. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe we got a bad batch. We're not sure. But yeah. anyways, yeah. we are going to rate it a one. I hope we didn't get a good match. Please don't make me finish this, mommy. <laughs> okay. Last, but certainly not least. One Raspberry. Of, one of uh, good old boy Mike's favorite colors, right? Yes. Yes, is we are mm. going to go to the Wild Berry Cider from Berlin, Germany. This one is 4.9% ABV. Um, well, it's better than the last one. Yeah, so tangy organic apple meets sweet wild berries. Hmm. With the uh, notes of blackberry and cherry. This is from Berlo. Yeah, there. I know we don't like to talk about websites except for me, but the website for this brewery slash gastronomy um, website is really interesting. It's very modern. Can we just agree that Germans are weird? I mean, can we can we just but agree they make on that? Great beer. They make great beer, great cars. I mean, they're good at making stuff, but they're freaking weird. Man. Mildly hairy women. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's fair. Okay. Hairy arms on their women. I, that's true. Yes. Well, their website is very, very modern. Wow. Um, and they are really proud of the food that they pair with their beer and with their ciders. Does their website remind you of like an Ikea store or... Actually, Ikea is more Swedish, I think. I know, but it's still very modern. This is, is very modern. fruit yeah. forward. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think the thing that uh, it's just lacks any body. Um, it's just 
so very one dimensional. Well, now this mm. so it's almost like a fruit juice. Now another thing about this one versus the others. So this is the only one that came in like a four pack of like twelve ounce bottles or whatever, and the rest were in larger format. Can you return um, the other three? Hey, <laughs> I like this one actually. I I think this this bridges a little bit closer towards grocery store. Uh, cider than the Absolutely. others. Absolutely. This would go well in a Capri Sun pack. <laughs> I, but, I, yeah. you know, for younger people who are, you know, like the kind of people that go to Southern Grist Brewing to drink hmm. beer slushies, I think this is their cider. You know, Yeah. Uh, I it's not complicated, that. and I don't think it has to be complicated. No, this isn't. This is definitely uh, not complicated. No, but I think for somebody that doesn't that likes apples, doesn't love apples, and wants something a little bit more. Yeah. This is a nice, easy gateway. Yeah. Not everyone has to be like, you know, a crisp cider lover. Mary, would you like another hard seltzer? <laughs> now, Mike, if they age this in a Calvados barrel, I would, you like, would like to think <laughs> that it would probably have a lot more body and substance and depth yeah, to it. See? It's just so very one dimensional. Yeah. It's just. On and off so quick. Um, this is uh, this is something I would gift to my third least favorite cousin. Mm. And see, like, <laughs> I, and and or I don't, or yeah. I would offer free samples while I'm peddling ED drugs. Like this restaurant. one, this one, and the last one <laughs> are like, like I said about the other one, like they're from breweries. Like they're primarily a brewery, uh, but they, they center as well. True, don't, don't, yeah. true, true, true. But they're they've you know. A lot of breweries do this. They'll make a, a seltzer or they'll make some ciders or something to appeal to non-beer drinkers. And I think anytime you veer away from your what your real business is, what you're good at, then you take the risk of making something that's mm -hmm. not necessarily going to impress the crowd. I would certainly prefer this to a seltzer. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, yeah, completely, <laughs> completely. You know interesting with the website that they have um, for everything that they make they have a drinking recommendation after they list what that particular do they recommend this for a could you bring me a bucket do they it recommend says, this for a guy named Mike okay it says combines beautifully with wild camping at the lake parenting in the big city or apple crumble <laughs> or you parenting. can give this to your fourth least favorite cousin parenting in the big city either, either story, i don't know what that means either story works you're the reason well, why mom, about, you're the reason mommy drinks you know so. <laughs> how about is the name of a really okay good how cider. about wild camping really at the lake Dave. i don't understand that either for that matter yeah. well, unless could, maybe you're with the guy from florida yeah. i mean who knows i'd like to hear somebody yeah. order that side do not go camping <laughs> with reggie from florida because <laughs> Yeah. Could I have the cider that was made because mommy told me? Yeah. What, yeah. what was it? You're the reason mommy drinks. You're the reason mommy drinks. <laughs> yes. Could I have that in a double, please? Yeah. <laughs> so, exactly. I oh. think I could improve on this if uh, if you add a little bit of honey. Because it's completely on yeah. the floor and needs anything. <laughs> it's better yeah, than with, the last With one. a little bit of honey, you could make it into a melomel. Oh, yeah. Bump up the ABV a little exactly. bit. Exactly. Well, dry it out. Adding more mm. sugars to it is going to provide a lot more body and substance to it, but I don't. So their tasting note says that it's notes of blackberry and cherry. I think that is probably dead on. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it is definitely a hard mix. I would say heavy on the cherry side of the equation. Uh, if I had to pick I'd, between those I'd, two fruits. I'd buy that, yeah. Yeah. It is a beautiful magenta. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, you know, that's like, what I want at the end of the day. Do you have anything that's really good and purpley? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? Put something pretty in your mouth. <laughs> Just like it appears on their website. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do, well, do you have I a mean, picture of this is why mommy drinks? Yeah. <laughs> well, and this is the most modern of anything that we've had today at the table because they started in 2014 as yeah. opposed to like 1700s et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I, you know, I think if this is a modern take on what ciders can be. And also this is Germany, which 
I'm sure, you know, because they're, they're weird. Beer scene. They're weird. Well, man. okay, but their beer scene is so legendary, right? Right. That, you know, this is this is just a modern take on stuff. So mm. I'm not sure what kind of German beer this would pair with because, you know, I mean, the three German food oh. groups are pork, potatoes, and bread. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, what is it? What is how does it cut through that? Well, apparently, um, an apple crumble. You could put, you know, some. Strudel or something. Yeah, some strudel. Yeah, yeah. It needs, it needs some strudel. To go with it. Hey, let's rate this up. I got a couple okay. questions to float for All our right. conversation. Fine, fine, fine. Okay, so the wild berry cider from B R L O in Germany. Mm. We are going to rate a three. Ha! In your face, Mike. It's all right. So the question I wanted to float was: is so it was an interesting. Um, choice i think that a lot of brewers have had when they are looking for making alternative products Mm -hmm. and yeah you know i think that if i had looking back at it you know i would have absolutely have guessed that people would have made um ciders um you know right alongside you know beers as as Mm -hmm. an alternative beverage um, I think meads are a lot more difficult yeah. know, to source sure. a lot of the, the ingredients. And I, I think it's not that I love mead, um, but I just I think it's a very complicated um, for a common brewery to be making. You yeah, know, a I think ciders are meads. the logical, most logical. So choice. I guess the thing is, is that the 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 move that I didn't see was the invasion of hard seltzer and the missed opportunity that cider do you think that that was because they were chasing a low calorie product yes. and that was appealing to the yeah. consumer yeah. as opposed to saying, I can create something for you that doesn't have gluten, you know, that is going to be a lower ABV and you'll probably enjoy, you know, drinking this more than any of the beers that we have on. But I also wonder if cider is viewed as sort of old fashioned and not trendy. Now, granted, because We've it's had not s- on a lot of restaurant menus. Yeah. 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 Right. You know what I mean? Now, granted, we've had some very artisanal, beautiful ciders. Absolutely. That DuPont Reserve belongs on like, you know, 500 restaurant menus. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I mean, and even right. the right. Eves I really liked um, and the first one I liked too. So, I, you know, I wonder if maybe there's just not enough exposure to what a cider can be when you're in a day and age of the grocery store ciders, which are just, yeah, well, you know, yeah, the, the, those B grade products, you know, kind of um, sort of topped out a few years ago. You know, they were more on tap than they are now. You oh, don't sure. find them anywhere, right? Uh, but they're in the grocery store, of course. Yeah, yeah. So, sure. yeah, and I and I think this is more time intensive than say a, a seltzer. Yeah, you know, sure. so a lot of it's about time is money. Yeah, and then if you're not in an area where there's a lot of orchards or apples isn't like a part of the community, mm-hmm. it's not going to make any sense either. So but, you're saying the base ingredients are probably more expensive as well. Yeah. And that probably cuts into margin. Yeah. Longer, I mean, more expensive product to make, longer time buy to some, ferment out. Buy mm-hmm. some fruit flavoring yeah. and, and some vodka and... Yeah, and call and it a day. Carbonate your yeah. water and you're well, done. Yeah. And I would say that I'm guilty of walking into a lot of tap rooms and there'll be a cider on and I'll, I'll never try it. I might sit down and have 12 different, you know, beers, beers yeah. but I'll never, I'll never taste it. I think cider. cider, you know, is a good thing too, like for uh, people that make kettle sours and like different fruited sour beers. I think that's an, that's an easy way to merge, but. To your earlier point, if people want seltzer, they're not chasing flavor. They're just they're chasing locale. Let's get a minor yeah. buzz, locale and, buzz, or and get whatever. out of here. Yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah. And okay. then honestly, we're beer lovers. When we go to a brewery, what are we going to drink? We're right. going to drink the beer. Anything and good. if I'm in Germany, I want a Hellas. You well, know. sure. All right. <laughs> I'm well, let's chase down some more of that Dupont Reserve. Let's get the <laughs> let's get the Hellas right. out of here. Well, that's <laughs> going to do it for today. Um, very interesting conversation. Yeah. And very interesting. I ciders. never thought that I would pair ED drugs and cider in the same show. Thank and you. yet here we are. I think we yeah. need to put that in the notes. For We're the here episode. for you. They ask us about our creative process. Boom. There you go. There, yeah. there it is in I'm a nutshell. I'm throwing the gauntlet down. You cannot pull <laughs> okay. that off. Hard. All right. Good old boy, Mike. Thank you so I, much for your contribution today. Thanks for joining us on this episode <laughs> of Sip, Suds, and Smokes. I hope you'll explore our back catalog. I'll ask you to keep on sipping.
Reverend Mark, as always, thank you so much for being here. Can't wait for the next one. <laughs> I said back catalog, not back door, right, Dave? <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, <good>. Wow. <laughs> this was a very hard episode to get through. <laughs> well, I have some jelly for you if you would like. <laughs> Thanks, good old boy, Dave. Call the, call the police right now. <laughs> Come on, bro. This is good old guy, Juliana. Thanks for joining us. Keep on chuggling and catch you next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you're listening to us online, do yourself a favor and tap. Just tap it in. The subscribe button. Give it a little tappy. Tap, tap, tap a room. The easiest way to listen to our show is to ask Siri, Alexa, Google, Uncle Larry, or whoever it is that talks to you on your phone. Play podcast, Sip Suds and Smokes. We love your feedback, and you can reach us at info at sipsudsandsmokes.com. Our tasting notes flow out on Twitter and Instagram with our handle at Sip Suds and Smokes, and our Facebook page is always buzzing with lots of news. You'll also be able to interact with the thousands, millions, and millions of other fans on those social media platforms. Do us a favor. Take the time to rate this episode if you're listening to us online. That's a big help to us, and we get to see your feedback as well. Come back. Join us for another episode. And keep on sipping. This has been a one tan hand production of Sip Suds and Smokes, a program devoted to the appreciation of some of the finer slices of life. From the dude in the basement studios, your host, the good old boys, will see you all next time. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>